Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. We're going to look at what the UPCI, the United Pentecostal Church International Manual, has to say on the subject of sports. Now, I know the manual is not the Bible, and it's not like the Book of Mormon for Pentecostals or Apostolics. It's just what we would say is like a commentary. It's an elucidation of the beliefs of Scripture and the application of Scripture into our modern day life. So we're going to look at what this has to say on the subject of sports. And basically, there's three places in the United Pentecostal Church manual that talk on the subject of sports. And I think they're very good, very well. Written. One thing, now I'm in the UPCI, not because I was born into it, even though I was saved in the United Pentecostal Church, but because I believe it most accurately reflects what Scripture says. And so I don't believe anything I believe because the UPC believes it. I believe everything I believe because the Bible says it. And the UPC is just a ministerial organization that people of like precious faith have joined and to propagate the gospel both here and abroad. So let's see what this has to say on the subject of sports. This was adopted by the General Board, presented to the General Confidence in the Conference in the form of recommendation 1984. It says, whereas the General Board has carefully and prayerfully considered the matter of organized sports and the effects it could have upon our churches, and whereas organized sports, as the world knows it, has an attitude and appearance that opposes Pentecostal principles, teachings, and standards, and whereas we would be entering into an area that could adversely affect our doctrine and separation, whereas in the interest of preserving the beautiful things of holiness, dedication given to us by prayerful, godly men who sacrificed and suffered for the great cause we represent, the General Board recommends that United Pentecostals refrain from participating in organized sports. Now, this recommendation is not to restrict the local church and its recreational activities which offer good wholesome exercise in Christian fellowship. And I think that's a very balanced view. You know, we've seen days where sports has become so big and sports stars have become almost uh, semi-gods, you know, the immortals of our day. And people just, they look at them for uh, inspiration and look at them for examples, especially among our young people. Solomon had this to say, you know, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And so even though the human body and the human mind needs sometimes of recreation, these have gone far beyond recreation and have become almost worship in many instances. You know, you've got all the settings of a church building, you've got a crowd, you've got participants, you've got people, you know, almost weren't doing the things that weren't clapping, shouting, that type thing, getting their emotions involved, you give an offering to go to these things. So again, while there's nothing wrong with basketball, football, these type things, and they can have some good things with discipline, Paul used many military and sports analogies, but the way it's got to today, it's just out of control. And you'll see the early church universally preached against these things as well, and worldly vanities. Well, that's one place. Let's look at another place that talks about sports, and it's under a holiness provision here. And it's holiness and physical exercise, holiness and physical education. And uh, I'll just show you that here, where that's at. Appreciate Sister Francesca helping us today. She's a blessing. Amen. Appreciate all the media team. They are an incredible blessing. And so we'll read some of this. I probably won't read all this, but uh, holiness and physical education. It says, we are not opposed to physical education. We all know that it's helpful. We do not disqualify the possible good and uh, of physical exercise. However, since scriptural modesty is commanded in 1 Timothy 2.9, we stand against unduly exposing the body in public as an important matter to our Christian conscience. And since modesty in dress is taught and practiced in our churches, we cannot approve the integrating of male and female in physical education classes in which scantily, excuse me, scanty clothing on the gymnasium floor in the swimming pool or an outdoor stadium is required. Now, of course, this goes thousands of years of teaching men and women are different 
and men and women are attracted to various things and the Bible talks about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life so this is an extremely good beneficial application of biblical holiness to modern day society but not just modern day society it was found all throughout the Bible the Israelites were uh, holy they believed in that God clothed Adam and Eve there in the Garden of Eden the New Testament teaches it as well so these are just some good things and one last place it talks about sports is in a little holiness uh, section in the United Pentecostal Church in the Articles of Faith and uh, it says we wholeheartedly disapprove our people indulging in any activities which are not conducive to good Christianity and godly living and then it goes on to mention several things uh, any apparel that immodestly exposes the body, all worldly sports and amusements. And then it doesn't say that it's sin. It just says we admonish all our people to refrain from any of these practices in the interest of spiritual progress and the soon coming of the Lord for his church. And face it, you've seen it and I've seen it. People get more excited about if their team wins, whether if their neighbor's going to go to heaven or not, or whether somebody gets the Holy Ghost, gets baptized in Jesus' name. So it just helps us keep our affections in the right place. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about what the United Pentecostal Church had to say on the subject of sports. And, you know, whether or not you ever become in the UPCI, that's totally irrelevant. What's relevant is, is that you're born again, you repent, and are baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and uh, God will fill you with his beautiful spirit. And then live for God according to Scripture and this book. So God bless you. We love you. Talk with you later.